na 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 You know you need to tune in if you want to hear um you know so we uh Chad, Josh, Demetrius, and Marcus every Friday. You know it's the square round table. Tune in. It's the square round table. Tune in every Friday. Let's have a blast. I know it worked. You had a long day. Just relax and tune in. Make sure you tune in weekly, every Friday. Majorsonmusic.com. We also tune on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and uh, YouTube. So yeah. What's going on, my freaks and geeks? We are the Square Roundtable Podcast. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in with us tonight. Guys, tonight we have a very special guest. Tonight's guest is taking sports manga world by storm by truly laying down the foundation for aspiring Black mangaka everywhere with his amazing manga, I X Foot. Please, guys, give it up for Zatiwatu Bond. Hey, everybody. How are oh, you doing, up, sir? What's up? You? What's up? It's good to be. <laughs> it is great. It's great to have you. Man. Yeah. And like I said, man, I read your I read your manga, man. Like I said, I loved it. It's perfect. Like it, it perfectly sets up. I don't know how many like you have I can thank, but I'm ready for issue number two, man. I've, I've got a lot to thank, so I ain't I ain't troubled there. Don't have a lot in my wallet, but as far as the manga is concerned, I got a lot ready to go. You gonna drop like ten issues on us real quick? Just... I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Look, look, I need it in my life, man. Like I said, me and my brother, like I told you before, we were just reading it, just getting through it, trying to understand the character dynamic. I don't want to give too much away, but like I said, it, I love something that has that kind of goes full circle. And when you read it, the manga, you want to know what the name means, and then right at the end, you hit us with that little thing, and it's just like. Oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, huh? It's like that feeling with uh DiCaprio, the DiCaprio meme where he's like pointing at the exactly. Like, like, ah, I got like, it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that is exactly what it is, man. Surely, and we will uh, put the link in the description below. But before we get started, man, I just I definitely got to tell all of our viewers and listeners, man. If you like, there's no basket. If you like high Q, this is better, man. Go out there and get it. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> that is, that's like, a- my boy, hey, man, he, my boy is out there killing here. the game right now. Like it's <laughs> like high tier, high level manga writing right here. But but yeah, Thank man. You. I did. No, you're welcome. A hundred percent welcome. But I definitely want to know, like, as far as writing manga and even like anime, like what were some of your influence when it comes to manga and anime? What made you gravitate towards using soccer rather than uh, football or basketball? What made you go to that sport in particular? All right. Soccer. So I'm Malawian and I grew up in Malawi 18 years of my life. So I've only been in the States three and a half years or so. Oh, wow. So like back home, we like live, breathe, sleep, eat soccer. Like it's all we do, especially when you're like younger. Like I remember we used to, me and my brother, we used to go through soccer balls so much because we played on concrete that my mom stopped buying them. So we'd like fashion soccer balls out of like plastic bags. That's just wow. how much we loved soccer. And I remember watching uh, Kuruko no Basuke and I was like, dang. Like, I need a cool, like, soccer anime manga type thing going to. Captain Tsubasa, no offense, I, 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 I don't feel it. The animations just throw me off. I don't think it's bad. I've read the manga is good, but the animation for the anime were bad. So I was like, I don't know, let me write something that's cool. Now, soccer, like, grass soccer is 11 v 11. And I was like, that's way too many people. To, like, characters for, like, you got to make everyone, like, matter but futsal indoor soccer is 5v5 just like basketball and i was like this is perfect for storytelling i can get every character to matter and look good and unique while like still throw off the sport i love yeah that's how it landed on soccer instead of uh, any other sport per se oh okay i, I like that yeah i like that as a narrative device so you felt it futsal will be a lot easier because i guess it'll be a lot more people to focus on yeah yeah i think uh, a lot of the sports like media in general is usually like very single sports like it's boxing or mm-hmm. it's yeah. tennis the prince of tennis is out there or it's like football it's, yeah football yeah something where you can easily zone in on three four guys like football you, you really only watch the quarterback and the wide receiver or something <laughs> like, soccer it's so many moving parts that i was like if i write a soccer thing i don't know if i have the talent to make 11 <laughs> characters matter all that much but i can handle five more or less yeah it's the way it worked out so that's it's it's good 
I think. Yeah. No, it is. It makes a lot of sense, definitely. Because, like, specifically, you have two main characters, and I like the way that they kind of function as, like, one... Well, I don't Like I said, I don't want to give it away, but I like the but way... The spoiler warning right now. You know, yeah, spoiler, spoiler warning. Spoiler there warning. You go. Like, I like the way they function almost as one protagonist. I just... It's really awesome, man. And, but I just wanted to ask you, like, how long have you been writing in general? I wrote, like, junior year of high school, mm-hmm. and you know how it is in high school if it's not about getting women or like sports it's not cool so i ended up stopping at some point because i was like i don't know i write and like this isn't really cloudy so i'm just gonna give it up (laughs) and then i ended up like junior year or sophomore year it's one of the two man it's so long ago but it's not (laughs) i ended up (laughs) getting attacked by robbers back home they hit me with machetes i don't know if you can see it i've got a scar that goes probably like two inches into my head Oh, and I almost sorry. died. And I thought of IX Foot right before this. I was like, I was recooking the writing like fire, and then I almost died. And when I came back, I was like, maybe I should like actually like finish the story before I just like I don't know get mugged again. So yeah. senior year and beyond, I like got really serious about writing. Granted, I was still embarrassed. I, I did it like in the dark, but <laughs> I did it mm-hmm. still. So I've been writing maybe five years, hmm. five. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm God. sorry. Like, I mean, yeah, man, I'm really yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. It's what it is. Zero out of five, they didn't kill me. So, <laughs> still I mean, here. yeah, you no, can that's, still, yeah, that's you definitely know, still alive and you can still, yep. you know, make more of your manga. So, like, yeah, yeah, that's. That's the beauty of it. It inspired me to keep going. No, that's definitely a great, that's definitely a great outlook because you don't know, none of us know like what tomorrow holds. I like that you turned, even though, like I said, that was some totally awful that happened to you. I like how you turned a negative into a positive, man. And and definitely, because like I said, you put out some great work. So I'm totally Thank glad you. you were able to do that. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, it's, completely. It's, it's one of those things where it's, I wish it didn't happen, but I'm also glad yeah. it did. Yeah. It's strange. Yeah. 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 It's definitely weird how things happen. I wanted to talk about also like the team around you. So like how, as far as the inception of this book, like how many people worked with you? What was the whole process of putting it together? Who's the artist on the team? Were you drawing the characters too, or were you just most writing i mostly write but the way i write i like i like draw little like thumbnails oh every scene. okay and my like writing process i remember i watched like a stephen king interview i've never even read one of his books no hate as the movie no, no, that's when you know there's hate but <laughs> 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 You know, I assume he's a good writer. He's got lots of movies and he's renowned. And he yeah. said something yeah. like, I don't write notes for my writing, like outlines, because if I have to write notes for a story and I can't remember it, it's not good enough to be written anyways. Hmm. So I just do the the little thumbnails and I don't write any notes. I just keep all the dialogue in my head. Then I type it out. And then last March, I found a, a Peng, who's an artist for another great series, Akai, by another... <laughs> Black Mangaka Anime Bay or Anthony Robinson. Okay. And I I contacted him. I was like, hey, I'm paying. I, I don't know if you're free because, you know, you, you're already on another series, but would you be willing to draw for me? And he was just like, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, wow. He didn't even do like a dance. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, you know, I'm busy. So how about $80 a page or something? Like right, that. right. <laughs> Here's my rate and I'll do it. And I was like, Cool. So I sent him the script and everything. He's in Malaysia and this is how good he is. We've never, I've never heard his voice. I've actually never seen his face. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Like, it's oddly like I know him, like as a person, but I don't. Like, but it's crazy <laughs> how he produces such good art. You think, oh, yeah. Like, you wouldn't think that I've never met him. You think I was speaking to him in a room somewhere dictating to him every scene but he's so good the art is gorgeous it's beautiful yeah it's so good yeah. on the page. and then for the cover letters because the pang didn't want to he's not very good at designing cover letters although i'm pretty sure if he really put his mind to it he'd be amazing i found this girl from my college kelsey anderson she's an artist she paints on instagram now uh, you can find her at kelsey anderson art and i okay. asked her, like can you make something I wanted a unique silhouette. But you just see the shape and it's 
I export rather than you don't really need to see the letters. Like Hunter Hunter has that vibe. Yeah. 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 It just by the, the shape and Dragon Ball too. And she came up with that and it's I think it's a killer killer like logo, word title, title letter or whatever. And yeah, she did a great job. And my editor is uh he's a teammate I had because I played soccer here at Huntington University. And he just reads all my stuff and he edits it. He's quick. He's good. He knows story. If it wasn't for him, I don't think this first chapter would be any good or as good as it is. His name's uh, Nate Orecchio. He's a fellow writer, not comic books, but word bricks, otherwise known as books. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, all right. He, he just reads it. And that's how good he is at storytelling, that he can bring his input from writing like prose and books into my manga and stuff. So that's the team. Yeah, never met a pain. Never met the artist. Never wow. seen him. Heard his voice. Yeah. Man, he might not even be a pain. Might not even be his real name. I don't know. Yeah, he is. It is. You at least like DM a pain, like how you wanted the characters to look. Like, how did that process? Yeah, work? I found him on Facebook actually, because I had recently gotten a copy of Akai. I think I had gotten the second chapter, mm-hmm. and I was reading it, and I was like, "Oh my, this this is just gorgeous." And Akai is independent, so my first thought was, like, I can do this, too. Like, this isn't Marvel, where, like, I'd have to go through back channels and, like, things to go and find the artist. And even when I did find him, he's, like, unaffordable or something. Yeah. Of course, I, like, those artists are good, so they get paid their work. Yeah. But I, I went and I just found a ping. I looked him up on Facebook. I sent him a DM. And that's actually the first thing he asked. He was like, okay, before you send me the script or any money... Can I at least see if the characters are like feasible? Because he, ne- I wanted it to be done like rather fast, and he didn't want to be like drawing characters with like armor and super detailed stuff or something. So I'll, yeah, I'll send you the character designs and everything. And he's spot on. He's very good. He's a very good artist. I'm very <laughs> thankful I found him. No, yeah, yo, he's definitely awesome. You guys seem like you were in the same room because i mean like the the way the story is told the character is so in sync man because especially my brother we were talking about a common problem that we see with like manga artists and things like that like they take and it's not a bad thing because obviously you had a lot of inspiration as well but they take inspiration from so many manga but it's just it seems like instead of coming up with something organic they just mishmash everything together. Okay, he has Goku hair with, yeah, yeah. you know, Ed Elric's arm. And, you know what I'm saying? And let's not forget about the white dreads. Oh, yeah, that's huge <laughs> nowadays. I don't know what it is. You see it in a lot of manga. There's a black character they have white dreads for some reason. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's just, I've seen characters that have, like, swords on their backs and they don't even use it. It's like, what? It's like, you don't have to... Stop. Uh, which manga do you talk about? I need, I need to read these manga that they're where this stuff's happened where they don't move the, use their sword or whatever. Like, where, it's just where? like when when I see a lot of character design, it's just you know, you over design the character, it's just food. It's, you have this tastes good, but it's got too much seasoning on you. Now, like scars in places that don't make sense. Okay, cool. Exactly. It's like, it's like one dude doesn't have an eye or whatever for no reason. It's like, <laughs> yeah. with no eye, just like, yeah. I got <laughs> no, look, you got a scar on one eye, then an eye patch on the other. <laughs> <laughs> or, you, or you just got two eye patches on. Did you blind? <laughs> right. Something. Right. Just making them blind. Like, you got them looking like this. Right. Or they'll have that one character that doesn't open his eye until like special instances like a Kakashi or whatever. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only open my eye when I'm in battle. Any other time, I'm putting the thing on it. (laughs) Exactly. But but you know what? It's funny that you said that, Chad, because it it made me think when you said a character that had a sword and never used it, it made me think about like early on in Dragon Ball Z when Gohan had a sword, but he didn't use it for anything. Like he would carry it around. I think he was like training with Piccolo. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. He swore for no reason. And I was like, "What do you got a, a sword for if he ain't gonna use it?" You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. and like for me, when I always, when I always used to draw, like in middle school, like 
I used to, if I gave my character a sword, you best believe he was finna use. You're gonna give him a design, yeah. make it useful. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Like they did That's with the trunks. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They act, he actually <laughs> used the sword. He was like, Bro, "Yep." Yeah. Cut somebody up real quick. But then back. they took it away from him. And then he didn't use it again. It was like the weirdest thing, bro. Yeah. Right. They, or they just or they give you baby trunks for what he, his potential is, but he just doesn't have it. Right. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we don't talk about We kids. don't talk about <laughs> We don't, we right. don't talk about kids' trunks. We don't talk about is, is trunks and then it's Gohan. Like, after the cell cycle. We don't talk about Oh, yeah, right? No, we only talk, we talk about him as in his, uh, his future self. Like that future version with one arm. That's the only, that's the only trunk. That's uh, it. Only Gohan we talk about. Oh, no, that yeah. Gohan went yeah. ham. That's my favorite Gohan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But yeah, it's just for your character, Z, uh, in particular, Team Captain. I love the design of the character. I'm keeping it pretty basic for a reason because it's a meaning for it. And I was just like, once I found it out, I was just like, oh, okay, that makes so much sense. It's, I mean, it's, and it's not too crazy. Like, it's a great design. One thing I did want to know, like, what's the uh, significance of the mask? Though of the like oh, the, 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 the main character, it's like a the goat face. I think it's like a goat face mask. Okay, so there's there's something that happened to him in middle school, in regards to a team that they always used to play, which you comes up in a later chapter. And oh, okay. Because of the the way this team like treated them, there's a reason behind the mask, and he has a best friend that kind of like matches with it. At the same time, the mask. I don't know if you noticed, but when he walks into his apartment, there's the Xbox and there's a disc with a WWE 2K game. And I don't know if you guys like watch wrestling, but Bray Wyatt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Bray Wyatt. He's yeah. now like the fiend or whatever. He used to wear a lamb mask or he used to have like his followers wear him or something like that. Oh. Jordanae, so it doesn't show up much besides the disc and the, the video game is a WWE fan in IX Put. So the mask is related to that and the thing that happened in middle, middle school. So it's got a two. Oh, okay. Something that like he likes mm. and it also has like a connection to a memory, but you only find it out along the way. So you just spoiled oh, yourself. You just spoiled yourself, Chad. You just, <laughs> you just, you just did it. You spoiled yourself. You <laughs> well, I mean, all that means is we just need to get those later chapters out. Yeah, we need to get those yeah, yeah, chapters just, out. Just put them in his hand. But I, I also thought, in general, I thought it looked cool. I was like, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You always, Maybe. that's always the first go to. If it looked cool, go with it. And then you can give it a back. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I didn't have the whole like backstory thing when I first designed him. I was just like, he needs a mask because who else wears a mask in a sports manga? And then as time went on and I wrote, I was like, like Marcus said, I was like, let me put some substance into this. Yeah. And then they, we can work backwards or something. But yeah, yeah. It, it looks cool. But you know what? That's like the beautiful thing about writing. You always can go and add something in later on that you didn't intend to be there. Oh, yeah. Like, they'll ask you, so, yeah, did you mean to do that? In your mind, you like, nah, but why you saying? You're like, yeah, I always meant for that. To, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. I, I Totally. Yeah. It's right, right. Exactly. I was right. watching another. It might have been Stephen King again. Don't know why. <laughs> another <interview. laughs> Where... He said something along the lines of never ask a creator what they mean in their writing because most times they're not, they don't even know. It's exactly. It's yeah. a happy accident most times. A happy accident, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I tell them that all the time, like when they read my stuff, especially Josh be trying to quiz me on my own stuff. And he be like, <laughs> what did you mean by this? I told him, I said, Josh, I can't even tell you what I was thinking when I wrote that. I don't remember. It just <laughs> it just came out and it was just there. So. It's almost like it's someone exactly. else's ear. Sometimes you're like, I yeah. don't know, it just works <laughs> <laughs> from another realm sense. into your head. Yeah, no, true. That makes sense. That makes uh, sense. Not, not for sure. But but yeah, Z, um, I really like how you added the uh, the MF Doom logo to the uh, main characters on the hoodie. Yeah. Yes, I love Doom. I think. I could go on, we could have a three-hour podcast on MF Doom. <laughs> Honestly, right now, his relation to comic books, the way he makes music, who he was, rest oh, in yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah rest in peace, peace, man. Peace. Yeah, rest in peace. I think Doom as a lyricist and artist is what all storytellers should honestly strive to be. You should be at that stage where 
you should like your audience, but you should act like you don't like them. Like you should surprise them in places where they don't want to be surprised or take them places where they don't think they're going, but they, they're going. And that's what a Doom song would do. You're like listening to lyrics. And Doom's one of those artists, first off, you're like, none of this makes sense. And then as you listen more and more, you're like, oh my, this is like deep, or this is a story, or he's just playing with us. And that's what I like try and do in my writing. I'm not even close. Like Doom does in a song would take me like 800 ma- manga or so, maybe even more. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you got that. I love hip hop. I love MF Doom. That's what's so up. Yeah. That's storytelling. Just low key being a villain. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> man. Villain, yeah. Yes. Being a villain with Attack on Titan right now. He, he oh, yeah. Attack on Titan loves like surprising the audience in yeah. the worst best ways possible. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, man. Like, talk about that for days. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%, man. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I like how you just squeeze little things in there. Like, even the, and like you said, like, your writing style, it's a rhythm to it. You know what I mean? Like, we, you talk about um, Stephen King, but honestly, I love Stephen King. I've read um, a couple of his books, and the thing that I like about him the most is just how thorough he is. He explains every little aspect of a story, and it leaves nothing to the imagination, but that's good because you get everybody's backstory. You understand the character, and then you understand why you should care about the character. Yep. And you don't. You said you don't really read his books, but you do the same thing. And that's a part of what you know really made me interested in your book because I'm like, wow, from an early point on, you know what I'm saying? I get to see like why I care about each character, specifically like the main two characters of the story. So yeah, oh. man, definitely. Yeah, hey so, man, you just co-signed Stephen King. He should hit you up with a, <laughs> I might get a book now. Like, <laughs> I'm saying, man, a shout out or something. I might Maybe watch a shout movie. out for a little bit of royalty, man. Give me yeah. a, little, a little more money out of here. I'll take it, man. I'll take it 100%. Like, look, I'm a huge. Yeah. Stephen King is, is good company to be with. Mm-hmm. No, definitely, definitely. No, yeah. the writing is the writing is great, man. You talk about MF Doom, yeah. like punchlines are there. Like I remember, I just <laughs> you know, it's I, I I like comedy, man. Like I'm a type of person like I love a good laugh. And I know Joshua, he was reading, he was dying in a couple parts. And then I'm an avid spy. Anybody that knows me knows I love Spider Man. I'm, I'm a huge. So when you made the uh, Arachna joke, and then you were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, right? And you were like, oh, it's it's copyright, so I can't. That was that was dope. I was like, okay, like we here, we on the same page. You know what I'm right. saying? So, so and definitely, definitely another part that I remember is when you kind of adapted the trope of like naming an app. Like this, like a similar version of the app, but not yeah, really. Yeah, like you, yeah, call yeah. Twitter, you call Twitter Birder. Like, yeah, I think that, I think yeah. I Birder. <laughs> Love that. I was like, it's a genius. Birder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, you truly like, because there's a lot of situations where I see people and I'm not, you know, trying to down anybody at all, but it's just, you could just tell, like, just the makeup of the character, like, you look at characters like Goku and Hinata and all of these kind of characters that have a specific purpose in the story, and then, because I remember, like, towards the end, uh, the main character was like, I know your secret, I know what it is, and then, you know, they're like, oh, God, and you're like, yeah, you're just, you know, you're a shot caller, that's your secret, and it's like, oh, okay, you're stupid, you don't understand, so it's just like, the, just that sort of thing, like, the just the beats, like, the beats of the story are just, like, completely there, man, so it's definitely dope, like, as far as writing, because I know, like, sports-wise, of course, you probably looked at, like, Q and you already talked oh, yeah. about Kuroko, but, like, writing, just, like, how many like times did you just read a specific manga or just look at like specific mangaka to try to I won't say to mimic their style but just to get the feel of how anime is because just from reading it seems like you understand like what it takes to have a manga or what anime characters like how long did that process take for you that I'm gonna say that took almost Eight months. I when I started writing, I was back home in Malawi, and Malawi is one of those places where electricity is not always around, and nor is like running water. So like when I was like, I'm gonna learn how to write comic books, I had to go to the internet, and the internet services aren't that great. Mm-hmm. But I nickel and dime in internet cafes and stuff, and I get like resources. I forgot the website. I keep naming the website, but I forgot what it was. And you could download like comic book scripts and. Oh, wow. 
all of these things the read professional like scripts for like stuff like Batman and Nightwing and all of that so I just started to read and read just to see like how they structure a script and what makes good dialogue and bad dialogue because the dialogue is really important if characters extremely come out and they all sound like me like if I'm reading it I'm like oh wow it's B2 B1 B3 <laughs> then I'm like ah this is bad like, and I want the characters to be to have their own unique voice so I just spent so much time reading reading comic book scripts just no art just the words and wow. nothing else and then of course I watch a lot of anime just because there's some things in anime like there's some tropes that are good and you don't mind featuring the tropes in yeah. in your writing of course there are some tropes that are a bit overdone as is of the course. case with most writing but i just watch a lot of anime i see i see what makes certain animes good and what makes others you know not as good or subpar <clears throat> i used to watch bad anime and good anime but now i think i'm like i've got bougie taste so it's very hard for me to watch something that's bad but Yeah, so you know when you get so deep into it you're like, ah, can I really finish this crap show? Like this, this is beneath me. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> wow. I got to know which show would you say is the like one of the worst ones you saw? Which like what was a bad anime? What would you consider a bad anime? Like oh, I was this December I was watching a show on Hulu called Special 7. Mm-hmm. And... I had never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, look it up. Oh my, it was so bad. The animations were terrible. The story didn't make sense. Things were contrived. It was trying to do uh, the same anime trope beats of humor, you know, every now and then or something. And it was just like this is bad. Has like the cliche like main character who wants to be a hero of justice or something like that. And I was uh, like <laughs> I was watching it, and it felt like a good concept. It was like uh the Will Smith movie like which I don't think that oh. that a decent movie right. Yeah. It yeah. was kind yeah. of like that same vein with like elves and like a world of gangs and stuff and cops. <laughs> and it was just terrible. I finished it though. <laughs> I went through, I slogged the whole way through cuz I was like I've started it I've dedicated almost an hour. I've got you know six more episodes left. That's only like an hour and a got half. Got to power through. Yeah, like I'll, maybe I'll learn something. I'll learn what not to do or something like that. There you go. Try to find a learning situation there. Exactly. It was it was a painful watch, but <laughs> right. But but yeah, Z and, and the rest of y'all. What do you think is like the worst trope in anime? Because I definitely have one to name oh, for sure. I gotta think hard on that one. You, you can go first though, Josh. I gotta you can dust off my anime brain. I don't know. <laughs> like old school anime so i got to really dig in and remember i got to think really about it too okay yeah now the trope that i hate the most is the the trope where everybody is some kind of divine entity and has this secret hidden power oh, and instantly yeah. becomes cool. buff <laughs> yeah oh, when they need to be when yeah. they need to be yeah. like escanor Oh yeah. hey, I, hey, don't be hey, don't hit on my boy Escanor. I love Escanor. Hey, Escanor is cool, but Seven Deadly Sins is kind of it's kind of weak sometimes. I'm not gonna. There, hey, there sometimes. I weak. will say the last uh, the new arc right now is actually pretty decent. So it's not it's not mid. It's it's good. See, I knew exactly <laughs> yeah, I what I was it. talking about. But yeah, you're right about that. You on that one? Uh, yeah. But, oh, or, I got one. Okay, go ahead, D. I just thought about mine too. I don't like I, or I always dislike the trope where like the, that one like shy kid is just like the center of like all the girls attention out of nowhere. I'm just like, "Oh, okay." Like, yeah, that's in right. everything. And I'm just like, uh, yeah. "Can you mix it up a little bit?" I've seen this in this show. I'm like, Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of like what Kuroko is. He has that. He's like, he don't yeah, talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Sasuke Loki. Sasuke, pretty Sasuke's much same Sasuke the Sasuke biggest is, one, yeah. Yeah, Sasuke that is the dude, don't do nothing but get all the girls for some reason. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for this one, but mine is not so much that I don't like it. Don't don't get me wrong. It's, all right, come I on. I just I just see it so much, What and that's like, that? <laughs> and that's like the 
whatever number you want to say the divine nine of just or 10 or however of just like the best people that do a certain thing and you have to defeat all these guys to be the best oh. just like like, oh, like, for instance, like, like and, uh, <laughs> food wars right and like food wars you got like this group of people that are just the shit and just like <laughs> and then in, uh, and you know z like in uh kuroko's basket you got the what is it? The generation uh, of the generation of miracles. Generation of miracles. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and every other anime has this. And what, what's the other one? It's the five. However, I don't even know what they remember. What they do, but it's always yeah. just like this top tier group of like people you just don't want to mess with, and they're just like, yeah, we're the best, and especially have to like beat all of us. in high school. Yeah. It's like they like run the school, make proper decisions about the school, right? And like, it's high school. Like, like the, where the principal at, man? Like, what's he do? <laughs> like, where the right. adult? <laughs> uh, exactly. It was a story. Oh, I know they're going to defeat all 10 of them. Yeah. Like, you kind of no have to. Uh, right. Yeah. Now, that yeah. would be a great story if they just lost and just didn't do anything in the anime was on. They lose at the end, they go do their own, they go do like a regular job or whatever, like they go, they're at a nine to five somewhere else. <laughs> exactly, like Kuroko like graduates and becomes like a, a, a school teacher or something. Like he's just like, yeah. That didn't work you know, out for me. Son, it just didn't work out for me. <laughs> exactly, like, but I think like that particular trope where you have to be like this crazy group of people is best done in Naruto with the Akatsuki. Cause it's, you have to beat them, but nobody really cares. That's right. <laughs> and they're not ranked either. Yeah. Se, and, then, and they're not ranked per se. Per se. And, and it's, oh, you, oh, you gonna say to me? They are, there are the top two, but everybody else underneath those top two are like mid-level. Ooh. Like they're not ranked. They're just like two, like there's pain and uh, what's your face? The uh, the paper girl. And then everybody yeah. else is below her or below them. Yeah. Yeah. Con- 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 Conan? Like yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just one of those it's just one of those things. Like another thing for me, like um, like Z, do you watch what is it, Boruto? Do you like Boruto at all? Oh, don't do this. Oh, man. It, it's it's don't. tough because I watch <laughs> Boruto, and I think my beef with Boruto is that he complains so much about Naruto. And bro, I spent like a lot of my childhood watching Naruto and liking yeah. him, and I'm just watching right. this kid just always complain about him. I'm like. Bro, you don't know what Naruto had to go through. I've seen that. It doesn't come to my like school meets or something. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's, he make, they make him seem like they script the show to where he's like a bad dad. He's just yeah, the worst right. dad. I'm just like, bro. Exactly. That don't make no sense. Like being as he, as uh-huh. like he was like an orphan. Like that makes no sense. Being a bad dad is an anime trope. It is though. It is though. Yeah. 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 The, or the video. or the gone dad. It is. The gone dad. Yeah. Like the the dad is just not around. <laughs> go ahead. I was just gonna say for me, that wasn't my trope, but my trope was like every time it's a fight, no matter if it's the villain or the hero, we always get like that monologue with a flashback of what happened to them or why they doing what they yeah. doing, what you trying to do and what you trying to say. But like, I'm trying to see y'all go ham on each other real quick. It kills yeah. it. Yeah. And I think for me, that's one of the big reasons why I didn't get into anime as deep as as um Chad and them. Because like when I was coming up at the time, because I'm like I'm an early 90s baby. So <laughs> most of us, if we got put on the anime, it was because of Toonami. So that's what we were used to. But when I used to watch it and that used to happen, I was like, okay. I'm gonna go watch something else now, cause I can't take the I can't take these long <laughs> speeches they finna make, and it take ten episodes for Goku to turn Super Saiyan and and freeze <laughs> and, go, and change three times. And but I always loved like the art of manga and anime because it, I just love that art style. So I've always been like drawn to it, and it's always been a part of me. I just never could get deep into it. And they like Demetrius, Chad, and Josh. They always try to be like, "Hey, man, you should watch this." And I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna try." He just don't try at all. He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> hey, get him on the 12 episode stuff." Like, I don't hey, know, we gotta do it a baby step. One, can, oh, no, hey, don't talk about Promise Neverland in this group chat. We, uh, season two, hey, we don't talk about it. Season one, <laughs> yeah, season one straight. Season one straight. Season two, I'm a little, I'm a little mad about that that last episode <laughs> that came out, boy, boy. I think one of my one of my least favorite tropes is the exposition female. 
They uh, only have most yeah. shows have like a Sakura who's like man, Sakura be asking the dumbest questions like where are they going? And I'm like Sakura. <laughs> so everything that just happened. Yes. Still asking this question so that this character can, can relay exposition to us, and it's not slick. Like I bet the writers like oh, yeah. I'm being clever about the exposition, but it's the female character. Like, why? I'm they, telling you. They switched yeah. up in recent, I think they switched up in recent, like, manga, stuff like that, where it's like, or a guy or a girl or, like, a kid. They'll switch it up every so often now, but I remember back in the day, it was like a, it was like a girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, was a girl, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now they have a kid or like they have a dude. It's like he just explains it to the main character. I'm like, oh, you're explaining it to us, but the main character should already know this because he's in the world. But okay. I think yeah, that, right. I'm good, Demetri. I mean, uh, Marcus. Oh, no, I just was going to say, I think the first time I ever seen it wasn't a girl. And it was a guy who was like, if you want to count uh, Pokemon, it's like an anime. Like how Misty used to go in on Ash because he would ask like dumbass questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Literally. like that was the first time I ever seen like it the opposite way. But then they made her like the angry tempered like girl who you know. Oh yeah, that's they, she fit that trope. trope. Yeah, she, she fit a different trope. You that's know? No, that's definitely a whole nother trope too. <laughs> yeah, big trope. I tried to avoid, which I like. I did, but I twisted. Like lots of sports manga do the whole like killer freshman duo or like first year duo who yeah, come yeah, in and the team's yeah. mid and since they're <laughs> killer they're like expected to just like take the world by storm and I like I have a duo of course but I think I like flipped it on its head almost in a way because they're not killer in the way you think they are but IQ did it Kagami and uh, just yeah. happy to show up in the same year uh, right. Basket did it with Kuroko and uh, Taiga. It seems to be a big trope in like sports mangas. Like, okay, we got the killer duo, and then the whole team is going to be good. Oh yeah, they did do that in Ice Shield. I was just thinking about Ice Shield Twenty One. I was like, they did do that a little bit because they had yeah. Ice Shield or Athena, and then they had the guy that the guy that would always catch the ball out of nowhere. He was playing baseball. I forget his name, but I had him at the other duo, so they were a duo in a way. This is it's, it's not like, it's not creative. They just, like you said, they just happen to be in the same freshman class and it's just yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. But no, I like how you took the backdoor approach to that because like I said, it, you don't see it until the very end and then it slaps you in the face. It's oh, okay. I see what just happened here. But yeah, man. We can talk about the the protagonist hair, that kind of thing, because that's the trope in some situations. Oh, not anymore, but it used to be where like you could tell the protagonist in the like the room because they had that weird, yeah. crazy wax yes. hair going oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> like, like, Goku like, hair. Boy, exactly. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh was yeah. been big for that. Oh, uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was the Yu-Gi-Oh worst Yu-Gi-Oh case. With that it's the worst case. Hair is <laughs> that hair is awful. It's so awful. like. Like, come on now, y'all. Yu-Gi-Oh! Isn't he from, like, Egypt or something? He's not that uh, black. He's, what are you draping, man? Oh, like, you know, something, bro. Man. The white locks. <laughs> hey, <there you laughs> not go. exactly the white locks. The white locks. Hey. And you know, man. it was so bad to, like, the trope with the hair. It was so bad to a point that growing up when I was drawing, like, characters, I thought, like, every character had to have a Goku-looking hairdo. <laughs> like yeah. even like with Digimon and Pokemon, yeah. and all that stuff, everybody's hair was like point, like real pointy edge. They took all the hair pieces and they had. I even had like black characters, but their hair was like Goku, and I was like, "This don't seem right," but <laughs> it's the only way I know how to draw. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, just go with it. <laughs> Man, go- Dragon Ball Z really messed everybody up. It did. It did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dragon Ball Z is that anime. There's been better anime, but it's the cornerstone of everything else. Yeah, yeah it's it really like a lot is. of ga- it's the gateway for a lot of people. Yeah, like, yeah. that's what it is. Because everybody's like, "Oh man, it's the best anime in the world." I'm like, it's a nostalgic anime. You can't take it out of their top ten. You can place your top ten one through ten, but you can never take Dragon Ball Z out yep. of your top ten. If even nah. if it's at the bottom, like you can oh, never yeah. just go. Definitely. No, yeah, out yeah. of respect, you got to put, because like I said, that's the, like you said, that's the gateway. So out of respect, you got to just put Dragon Ball Z in there somewhere. Like, you just got to have it. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be in your top 10 somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So many but, other um, anime just copied it. Like, time skips. I don't think anybody was doing time skips until Dragon Ball went to Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Stone and formula in general. 
everything, the hair like we just talked about. Dragon Ball Z is that anime. Yeah. No, seriously, even with the, like, Marcus, you were talking about the uh, the tropes with, like, uh, the Dragon Ball Z fights where, okay, they have a long stare down, and it takes two episodes for the fight to even start. Now, here's the thing, bro. That's bad, but, like, Z, you definitely notice, like, they do that mess in sports anime, which is even worse. Like, <laughs> man, like, when I was, uh, IQ was horrible for that. Like when they were going up against, I can't remember his name, but they called him like the the king of the court, at least Haiku and Haiku Wait, and uh, Hinata. Yeah, with the with yeah, I think so with the red hair, the reddish hair. It's either Oikawa and uh, Tobio or Kagayama and Hinata face each other for the first time. Yeah, I think it's Oikawa because he because they kept mm-hmm. referring to him as like the king of the court, and then he was just like. They kept going into like his backstory over and over yeah. and over again. I'm just like, because that arc was like, what was that? Like ten episodes? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty long. Like a, like it wasn't even like a regional game. Or <laughs> exactly. Long. I'm like, bro, this is too long. But they make it work though, because I thought initially volleyball. I'm like, I'm totally not going to be into this because it's just the back and forth. But they make it work. That that fast move that uh, Hinata has, that misses like brand new every see, time. It's <laughs> crazy because what's manga is so guilty of doing like anime time where like yeah. a three second thing goes by like has like 15 minutes of like yes. dialogue and like contemplation and all that. And like the Haikyuu like the Hinata like Tobio fast move like you, that you just pointed it's the only thing that I think moves in real time. Everything else is always like, and now, and then it's like, gotta think about like my life as jump up and spike this ball. Like, right. No way. No, but that's until he not started opening up his eyes. And then he'd get up in the air and look at the ball for two episodes. So it really only worked when he was looking, <laughs> when he was closing his eyes, just doing it like off rip. But as soon as he started opening up his eyes, man, he would be looking sitting up in the air looking at where the uh, the light is where he can hit the ball pad. i'm like bro like you're not in the air that long come on <laughs> it's all it's all press it's all what's going on in his brain at that, at that like, second that's what they are doing that's why they have the anime time gotta be the shoes if we're talking about anime <laughs> time can we talk about goku versus frieza how that took five episodes for like planet namekia to explode it like took five yeah. episodes they're like it's five minutes till it blows up and i'm like oh so we're five episodes later <laughs> yeah, it's two minutes exactly. left though i'm like <laughs> exactly and like that's and, and what the was first time in my life as a kid where i was like i see why my parents drink alcohol sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me want to drink <laughs> exactly uh, it's too stressful and, um, man and and like, say, um, oh yeah not to cut y'all chatting like my thing oh, my yeah. thing with that frieza fight was like what was with goku slapping frieza <laughs> Like grabbing him by the arm and slapping him yeah. for a whole episode and a half, flexing on him. Oh, yeah, he got to <laughs> flex a little bit. Him. I guess he, he he didn't punch him; he just slapped him. See, he was like, "This is as much respect you get. I'm gonna smack you in your face with the open hand." You're like, "You can't even get a full punch." <laughs> hey, that's just how it is, man. That's just how he's got to lay down. Yeah, you got to put the hand on him, man. You got to. <laughs> you got to give him a good, uh, good grace. Got to give him a good backhand. Yeah. Exactly. Let him know who you are. Man. Yeah. Too many people out, I mean, out here punching, yeah. man. You got to give him backhands every so often. Mix it up a little bit. Keep, keep him guessing. Exactly. Exactly. But, but yeah, see, I wanted to know, in general, like, how long does it take you to, to write a chapter? Like, as, as far as the first one is concerned, like, the whole process from writing it to getting it to putting it out, like, how long did that? whole process take the first one i would say probably maybe a year because oh, really? I, I wrote it as two chapters at first mm-hmm. and they were totally disconnected more or less mm-hmm. and then i like went back to it and i was like oh man this is terrible which is always the fear with editing because you're like dang what, what i write is so cringy <laughs> and then i like edited and edited and then I was like, you know what? I think maybe I should just mash these two chapters together and make them like almost one whole story that leads into more. So I'm writing chapter 30 of I Foot right now. Nice. And that will take me like a week, which in a sense worries me because when I was getting into comic book writing, like professionals would be like, just write a page if you can in a day. 
it usually takes you about something like 20 days to write a chapter. And I'm like, man, I'm doing this in a week. Either I'm really bad, like the kid who finishes <laughs> test quickly. Yeah. He's yeah. Genius, or he's really bad. Or he's really. <laughs> yeah. There's no like, middle ground. There's no middle ground. See, 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 see. Let's see what, what this gets us. So I don't know. Like, I take a week and then I get it edited and whatever Nate prescribes, I usually cut out or keep or whatever, but a week and a half, I would say, it usually takes me to pump out a chapter. Okay. Like I said, it's really good stuff, man. Obviously, everybody has different techniques. It's not like that's the Bible for how to write manga or write a comic book. You don't have to painstakingly take a year to write a page. You yeah. Know? But, but you can. But if you don't have to and it just comes to you like that, then, you know, that's good. That's just your process, man. Yeah, yeah, I always say the, the sure. characters write themselves low key. Like when I'm in a group, I'm just up. writing it and I'm like, a backstory will pop up or something. I'm like, man, I wasn't even thinking about that, but it's good and I can work with it. Bruce Lee says, there's no way. The way is that there's no way. So it's just like you said, exactly. there's like so that. many ways to just write manga. And I guess this is mine. And I, I, I hope it works. I hope it keeps working. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. I, yeah, and I mean, sure. What, one thing I also wanted to know, so when you were trying to come up with the characters for your story, did you draw inspiration from like real people or was this something you just pulled out of like fiction or are they based on people? Yes, actually, like almost half of them are based off people I know. The main character, <clears throat> Yodane, is based off me and like some of the events are like similar to what happened in my own life. Mm. And Yodane is actually my middle name. Which oh, wow. I guess hey. so. He's he's nice. definitely me, but like much cooler and more ideal. <laughs> and um, the principal in the Mr. Komodo and the coach yeah. was based off in my high school. The head teacher who had like the principal's office was also the soccer coach at some hmm. point, and he's got a similar name to Komodo in Ifoot. And he is based off another teammate I had in high school. So, like, most of them are, like, based off people I knew. And that's the beauty of meeting people in real life. There's some people that are so cool. You're like, you should low-key be a character in a book or a movie or something. And I guess it's maybe it's plagiarism from real life. I don't know. Their names are, like, the names of my friends. And I just misspelled them. You never know who's going to come through with a lawsuit. It's not you. That's not That's you. Your name you. spelled differently. Yeah, I know how to spell your name. That's not <laughs> you and I explicit. So, but yeah, a lot of them are just their names. But I take a lot of inspiration from real life. I think a lot of good writing is just taking attention in real life. Like noticing what people do. Because people are quirky. They're funny. They do weird things. And you can put anything to a character. Some people like to, I don't know, rub their nose when they ask a question or something. And they, I don't know. Makes yeah, writing yeah. more uh, flavorful, more variety, I think. It's the, it's the little details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It makes it real. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, more about making it real. How did you get the Japanese names? Did you just pull them from shows? Pull them from animes that you might have watched in the past? Some of them. I used to follow, so I watch a lot of soccer and like yeah. the Japanese national team. I love the way they play. They're, they're mm -hmm. a really good team. They don't win a lot of games, but they play really good soccer. They're like, like the LA Clippers. They're like, they're good, but they're bad. Sorry, <laughs> 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 man, but the Clippers fan here. I, don't know why. And I like the Clippers, but you know, facts be facts. <laughs> and so, no, thanks. Thanks, thanks. I took a lot of names from the uh, Japanese national team and then some of them I would either try and find a meaning as like I got deeper into writing and then others I'd just be watching the credits honestly I'd be watching the credits to an anime and I was like ah, <laughs> pretty good name there and then <laughs> <laughs> writing it down yeah I'd throw that in there but I, I, some of them are like inspired from anime characters I like. One of the defenders on the Furudate team. The name Furudate comes from the Haikyuu writer and creator Haruichi Furudate. Oh, was, nice. That's like a little pain of homage to him. And some of them, like Kaneki, is named after Kaneki from uh, Tokyo Ghoul. 
Uh, okay. I was, yeah. I was thinking yeah. that I yeah. was yeah. like, yeah. I, peeped that. I, I peeped that. I was like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's another show with seasons after season one. That's we don't talk cool. about after season one. We don't, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that's the tape. Cut the tape. We don't talk about it. But yeah, that's how I come up with some of the Japanese names. Yeah, that's um. Cool. Yeah, that's oh, that's nice. That's nice. This is actually really cool. Speaking of speaking of seasons, also, have you been keeping up with with Promise Neverland season two so far? I read the manga, so oh. yeah, yeah. You, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> they took out the best arc, man. They took out the yeah. best arc. They took out Goldie the best okay. arc. Oh, I'm so mad. Goldie Pond, Loki, like two seasons on its own. Yeah, right. Or if you uh-huh. want to investigate it. And then nothing was happening. Then they had a recap episode. And then I was like, yeah. Yeah. When they, uh, yeah. Was, when they had the recap like, episode, I was Attack like. Titan needs more recap episode. Because a lot happens in a couple episodes in Attack yeah, on Titan. Yeah, because they have a. Two, nah, like, yeah, nothing happens. They do an anime only for Promise Everland too. And uh, have you got have you gotten caught up, Chad? Before I start, the only yeah, you can talk about. I pretty much figure figure out what happens. I haven't watched the last episode. But oh, I know, then I, I won't. I know about. everything about norming, so it's just like really, you, you really, but, you know, about the new episode. Like I can't talk about it, but the, I'm mad about that new episode. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm mad about what they did to my boy Norman. Okay. What about the guy that hasn't even started the series? It's hey, like, you late, bro. We we've had what? How many guests on the show from that show? Like you late. <sighs> like it's your problem at this point in time. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, but oh, Attack on Titan, like I, I'm I'm not gonna say too much. But season four does do a big time skip, and like it's really weird at first. It's just like, oh, who are these characters? Yeah, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it. There was like three months somewhere that just got jumped, and they didn't even tell you like three months have passed. And you're like, okay. Yeah, was, I think wasn't it like four four years or something like that? It was like years between because like yeah, Aaron's like he's like a, an adult bro, now. Bro, like he's, that was in the trailer. Oh, man, man. That was in the trailer. That was in the trailer. But nothing for you yet. I haven't even talked about <laughs> Titans yet. So we just go just move on from that because he's yeah. not ready. <laughs> no, he ain't, he ain't ready. But one one Ooh. new anime that really surprised me though. Uh, see, I wanted to know if you have gotten a chance to see it. Have you watched Beastars? Yes. Talk oh, about Beastars. Yeah. Talk about oh. Beastars. Beastars yes. is amazing. amazing. I love yes. Beastars. That's a good show. Ah, that's I, a good I, I gotta show. check it out. I still gotta check it out. I was out. like, this is gonna be weird. This is gonna be terrible. Yeah, food. I thought it was gonna be weird. Oh, that's a prize. Why is Beastars so good? Because I same thing, because like the animation, I'm like, this is gonna be trash. But then I yeah. started watching it. But my, my boy Legacy though. Know? Yeah, bad. Man. Yeah. Oh I got I just got God. the season two, man. I'm 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 on the season oh. two train right now. But season one yes. was really good. It was weird it's at points because like it's like animals that are like humanoids. So it's weird in that aspect, but like it's good though. Like I would it's recommend so that. Good. Oh, it's, no, it's, it's, it's realistic. Just looked it up. Looked it's no, weird. dude, it's check it out. I mean, fuck, man. No, it's it's really good. And then, like, one the of the one, characters is this huh? the one that's on Netflix? With yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. They, like dress up in suits and stuff. Oh, like yes. the wolf? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a wolf on the main. Like artists were doing like a kind of they own like version of it with like characters from like Disney movies or something, like The Lion King or something. I don't uh, know. I'm not too sure about know. that. So, there might have been some like yeah. uh, fan art online of it, yeah. but mm-hmm. but dude, I'm telling you, watch. It's it. like it's... Zootopia, but if like if what would really happen in Zootopia? It's... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Disney's Basically, like, yeah. yeah, Zootopia. This is all they all of them are coexisting. Like in B stars, nah, right. that ain't even real. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Zootopia if the rabbit character was really about it like that. My <laughs> girl. <laughs> My girl, I love her so much. Like she is so hard, bro. She done been with every... <laughs> she done been with everybody on this show, bro. I'm like, God, dog. Like, my girl is the truth. Like it is hilarious, bro. And not to miss the was... deer, that deer dude, right, the wild deer. I was... Exactly. I was wondering why she got so much hate. Because when the show came on, I'm like, why don't anybody like her? But. I figured it out. Yeah, man. It's a great show, man. It it's, is, it's man. definitely dope. Yeah, I recommend mm. it. If, if, yeah. if anybody wants to see it, like, you should watch it. You're going to be um, surprised. 
Because I was surprised how good it was. I was like, oh, okay, this is not going to be good. Because my friend told me about it. He was like, yeah, it's a good show. I'm like, I don't know, man. It looks sketch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's definitely. But it's, it's good. It's definitely. Lit. Yeah, I, I for sure recommend it. But but yeah, it's just like separated from uh, like a manga a little bit. Like I know you're in college right now. Everybody here at the Square Round Table, like we're big on education, man. So definitely for all of our uh, viewers out there, we want to know what you, what are you taking, man? And how's it, you know, how's everything been going for you? I know you're in your last year, right? Yep, I'm a senior. I played four years of college soccer. Nice. I was... My knees, I don't have knees anymore. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yes, mine are gone too, my friend. I, that, I think that's one thing that comes with a diploma. <laughs> when you get it, Bruh. the knees just go. They're like, I they just go. Give a knee brace for you. Um, I'm a marketing and management major, more marketing than anything. It's just more creative. I definitely, now that I publish the manga, like being marketing has been so helpful because. I know how to sell it more or less. It is, I think two hours ago I checked, it was still in the top 100 sports manga on Amazon. So nice. congratulations, by the way. Congrats. That's awesome. yeah, congrats. That's, so that's, that's I'm great. coming for number one. If you're not, they better watch out. I'm coming for number one, at least for a couple hours. Because I'll jump <laughs> off. I got to 11. And then immediately, an hour later, I was back at 30. And I was like, dang, how's this guy like he's <laughs> <laughs> selling them out of the trunk of his car like 50 cents or something like that like <laughs> just but, like in the manga bro <laughs> like hey, take one yeah. but yeah marketing has really helped out business is a chill major so it affords you time to to write not saying it's easy or it's a joke i'm not doing like you did biology and some people are doing nursing or something like more strenuous but like marketing and management, yeah, you go on, you tell them stuff. You usually say stuff you already know, but you put a name to it. And then I have time to write because that's just what it is. It's been hard with COVID and stuff. College has been a different experience, more or less. But even that, like the lockdown gave me so much time to write and focus on my export and how I'm going to set things up. But yeah, yeah. For this country, it's been good. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, because I guess because of COVID, like a lot of it, at least like what, like 80% of your classes are online or you take all of them online? Last semester, no, wait, two semesters ago, like last year before we finished, everything was online. Then this year, like we've been back, but like the rules are changed. Some of it, like I get it, precautions, but like we can go to class, but we can't go into another person's dorm. So the only time people is in class. But if I'm seeing them in class, what makes the dorm different? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's just like weird, quirky stuff like that. And of course, like if you have symptoms now, like professors literally email you like not to not to come to class if you've got like the sniffles or something. But they we've been in person most of it. Okay. Which is nice. Definitely privileged because most schools had to go online or like do something like 80%. And that just, I mean, that's not college, low key. No, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I know specifically, like, my my alma mater, like, they, yeah, they're 100% online right now. So even, I'm not sure about my graduate school, because I go to uh, Southern New Hampshire, and that's all the way in New Hampshire. So I don't know what they're doing on their campus, but I'm 100% online just because I live in Georgia. So, but, yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, no, sure. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, what are you about to say, John? Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I go to Southern New Hampshire as well. But but my, my major is software engineering. So it's, my thing is, it's, it's still hard no matter what I got to do. I got to turn it into them anyway online. So it's, huh. Yeah, it's crazy. The biggest thing I want to say, Ozzy, is as far as going to school in general, I've taken some business classes, man. And it is, it's no joke, man. It's nothing to sleep on, like 100%. The marketing is, is tough. Like I've taken it as a um, biology major. But I think, you're doing a great job, man. Like going to school, going to college is something that a lot of people just don't do in general because it's tough. And yeah. then you're going to school and then you're running your own business. So you have a black owned, you're a black manga. Cup. That's huge, man. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, so, sure. so we just want to congratulate you on all of that, man, from everybody at the square round table. Like you're doing awesome. So keep up the hey, great work. Man. Oh yeah. Hey, the, the professors oh, here are super helpful. They're super good. 
I'm blessed to go to the school. I sometimes I take it for granted when you're a college student. It's cool to complain about everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like part of the culture. It's like, we're not supposed to like this place. When I stop and think, and I'm like, yeah, my professors are cool. They they actually teach pretty well, and they help you out when you need help. And that's the reason why I can do the manga, because they streamline the process more or less. Like, they're not holding my hand, but they're definitely there, like, teaching me where I can get stuff done pretty quick. So I'm pretty blessed that college is it's low-key a once-in-a-lifetime experience, especially coming from a country as poor as Malawi to go to college in the United States is like huge and to go to a college as good as this. So I'm just blessed. Awesome. No, it, no, no it's, it's definitely, that's, that's awesome, man. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's really, stuff. yeah, it's really inspiring stuff, man. Like I said, we, we appreciate what you do, man. Definitely. It's a, a lot of positive stuff, man. It's been positive for me and my guys. And I'll, and I'll tell you when, what really made me hit you up, I was actually watching me and my uncle during the pandemic. We've been watching a lot of anime. He's not really into anime, but I got him into it because that's that's what I like to watch. So <laughs> we started off watching IQ. We started off watching IQ, and then he's a huge basketball fan. So then we started watching Kuroko. And then he was like, man, Chad, this is great. But man, where are the brothers at, man? What is going on? Like, they need to be. <laughs> you met, Man, you that sounds like your uncle, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Uncle Gary. So, and uh, he was like, yeah, man, this is great. But, you know, where's this? I like this. But with Black people, like, why can't we have a Black guy make this same thing? It's, and I was just like, man, I brushed it off. I'm like, that's just how it is. It's, it's, it's anime. It's, it's manga. It's whatever. And I didn't think about it. And not even, it was a day later. I was going to the store. I think we were getting gas. And I was on Instagram. And one of the anime pages I follow, they had your uh, manga. And they were talking about you. I think they like gave like a highlight. And I threw my phone. I was just like, <laughs> Uncle Gary, Uncle Gary. What, literally what you were talking about yesterday. This is it right here. A black manga cup, black manga right here. We were just talking about sports manga, and here it is. And he was like, oh, man, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah. And literally, I hit you up two seconds after that. I'm like, I got to talk to this guy. This is amazing. This is exactly what we needed. This is what I'm talking about. This is what he's talking about. And just that representation, man, just letting you know young black guys know that we can fit into this space too that's huge you know what i'm saying so that's why i had to hit you up bro 100 percent. thank you thank you that's that's low-key fate that's dope no it, it's <laughs> crazy man how it just happened because i wasn't looking like literally because i think i'll be honest because the channel that showed you guys i want to say it's called is it black anime pods i think and, yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The I think he's a British Jamaican dude, right? He's dope. He's super cool. He's helping me. He's out awesome, a lot. and we appreciate him too because, like, we're like mostly we do a lot of anime, so we're featured on his website. So that's how he reached out to us and was like, "Hey, you guys want to want me to uh, show your podcast?" Blah blah blah. And that's how we got in contact with him, and I follow him now. So that's how we found you. And like you said, it was like fate, man. I found you just then. I read your manga and we got to see who you were. And it's awesome, man. I'm so glad we got a chance to converse with you, man. Like 100%. Hey, man, this has been super cool. Like, let's talk about <laughs> manga, anime, bad tropes, MF2. I know, man. It's and it's, oh, yeah. and it's inspiring, man, because like I say, I'm a writer and I draw too, but. I'm more so right because I kind of, I do my drawing, like I give it like the back burner of like my traits. I don't focus on it as much as I should. It's just cool to meet somebody like mine, talk about manga and anime, comic books, just writing period. Cause I always tell people, I love writing because it's really a part of you. And you get to express how you feel at the at that moment or something, like you said, something that's happened or something you always thought about that you never probably would do. Like you said, how you bring your friends into stuff and all that. And I do that all the time. Like, even before I even write it on paper, I'm like, would be a good idea? Like the other day, literally, I said, it'll be a good idea if like I have one of the guys in my story be a, a scientist because I have a friend that's a scientist. And his name might not be Chad, but Chad is like the first person that comes into my head because I personally know him and I know, you know, what he does. So 
it, it's so cool how you do that because that's how I think when I'm writing. I always use people, you know, who I know, because like you said, that, that's the best way to tell your stories because it's yep. real people. Just change his name a little bit so you don't get sued. Hey, I know, I right. Just <laughs> come back from it. You know, like, yeah, where my money at? Brand new on me and be like, hey, man. Where my, brand at? <laughs> where my money at? <laughs> but, but yeah, man. But yeah, so these guys, they're being really nice about it. But true enough, man, like uh, Marcus, you know, I read his stuff all the time. Joshua, these two guys, they're the greatest writers I know, man. Such talent. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and because uh, Joshua tells me his stories all the time. And in everything I know, literally, like as far as hip hop goes, you want to talk about hip hop, bro? Demetrius, like that's yeah. like I didn't yeah. listen to hip hop before I met that man. So like that dude like knows everything there is to know about hip hop music, man. So naturally, like we had to talk to you, man, because your work embodies everything we believe in, man, a hundred percent. So I can't wait to see what you guys come out with, like what you guys write, and of course oh, you can always oh. chop it up about hip hop. Oh yeah, most oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah whatever sure. whatever we write about and working on, we'll make sure to keep you in the loop, bro. Most one hundred percent. All right, Ben. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. man. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, we'll continue, man, to keep in contact, and we'll definitely reach out to you, man, and and talk. So I'm once again, like, I'm so glad we got a chance to meet, and it's been such a pleasure talking to you tonight, man. Yep. Uh, before I go, I forgot to shout out Footy Central. Over here, the logo on the front back cover. Amazon doesn't print backwards, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely big shout out. <laughs> they're, uh, right. they're the Instagram page. They're ran by my two friends, Noah Stanford and Jordan Morris. And if you like American soccer, like particularly college and high school, or American women's soccer, which is very good and high level, mm. they're the page to go to. They have highlights. Just you just see dope stuff like a goal that's like amazing and crazy and yeah that's check them out on instagram footy central f-u-t-y central so i okay, guess, definitely yeah there's no 100 i'm their official manga so Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah props. Major uh, props. Mad props, man. That is so much heat. And yeah, guys, for yeah. all of our viewers and listeners, we'll definitely put all of that stuff in the description below. So no worries about that. But yeah, guys, it's been like really fun. And before we head out, uh, Z, I want you to tell our viewers and listeners, uh, you already told them about your what was on the back of your book. Uh, if you want to repeat it again, you definitely can about soccer. Definitely let them know what you got going on as far as anything you might have coming out. Let them know where you can find you on social media, where they could buy your book, where they can read it, all of that good stuff. All right. The book is on Amazon for $4.50 which I think is a pretty generous price point. It's easy to find. Just type in IX foot, and thankfully the algorithm usually will fill it in with manga or book at the end. Just go there, buy it, give it a good review. Reviews matter. They're huge on Amazon. Uh, before I had any good reviews, you typed in IX foot and eye makeup and foot cream came up. So oh, goodness. Oh, darn. <laughs> I thought I've got reviews. It fills it in. But yeah, give it a review. Check out 40 Central on Instagram. Definitely want to shout out my mom. I think growing up in Malawi, especially like we, we had some, but we didn't have a lot. It was a lot for her to give us cartoons and let us like just be kids and get the imagination going. And we can see how far it's gone. Of course, maybe watching that many cartoons, I haven't grown up too much, but I'm not mad about that. <laughs> awesome. uh, yeah, shout out my mom. Dini Brenda Sulamoyo is her name and she's dope. Hey. I miss my mom. I haven't seen her in four years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. With your mom right now, or you're not, just love on her, man. That's that's your mother. And yeah, check it out. I Foot on Amazon. We're going for number one. I'm going to dethrone Haikyuu at least once. It's, <laughs> we just had a crazy year, and Malawian is going to be on the top of the best-selling sports manga on Amazon. Help me get there. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it, it man. man. Man, all good sure. stuff, man. Once again, shout out to your mom. That's beautiful, man. That's awesome. I hope you guys get to see each other soon. And once again, man, we want to see it, man. I love Haikyuu, but let's dethrone Haikyuu, man. Everybody, yeah, we're taking it down. Here, <laughs> yes, man. That's what I'm talking about. Like, we need more African mangaka out here, man. Like, dethrone Haikyuu. 
get IX foot on the top. Let's do it. Like, I mean, even if it's for an hour, let's do just get them. Let's knock them off the throne. Hey, and of course, thank, thank you guys for having me and giving me a platform. Like, it's hard as a mangaka, like being independent and then being black and writing a story with a black main character, universal appeal, whatever. It's tough because a lot of people don't want to take you seriously or they don't want to listen to you just because you're indie and then it just, it's harder just because you've made the main character black or something like that. And it's dope to see guys like you just putting us on, putting writers like me and giving me a chance to ramble on about MF Doom. It doesn't happen a lot. I reach out to a lot of people. And oh, wow. I get left on red. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Like, oh. So it's cool to come out and just talk about manga on a Monday and like anime and things I love. So thank you. Thank you so much. Man, no, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah. I'm in here. Yes. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Yes, thank you, man. You were completely welcome. And I, the, the biggest thing was I, I love to see it, man. The representation is so important. And the fact that a lot of other people can't see it, you know, they just can't see the diamond, man. That's all it is. And don't ever stop. Keep knocking down those doors. You know what I'm saying? Like it, other people's ignorance, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. You have a fantastic product. Like me and my brother were talking about the ins and outs of what it takes to have a great manga, a great story, or a fantastic writer. You have a fantastic team. You guys are the Avengers, man. And you are going to be so awesome. This it's amazing, man. So just keep sure. keep knocking down those doors, bro. Just keep knocking them down, man. I man, you got the formula. <laughs> you got the yeah, formula, I'm try and man. keep it. I'm gonna try and keep it. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You got it. You got this. It's all good stuff, man. But Yes, for all of our viewers and listeners. Huh? Excuse me. I didn't say nothing. Else. No, I didn't, he didn't say anything. No, you're good. Oh. oh, okay, okay, okay. But yeah, guys, for all of our viewers and listeners, we will definitely put everything in the description below. So yeah, guys, once again, like every week, guess what time it is? Shameless promotional. Shameless promotion. Yes, yes, it's time for the Shameless Promotional, and we are the Square Roundtable Podcast, guys. You can catch us every Friday on MajorZoneMusic.com at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Central Time, and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, you can catch us on YouTube on Friday at any time, and if you like the, if you like the video, smack the like button, comment on any i'd say your favorite manga anime have you checked out his book let us know all that stuff and any other questions you would have and share the video and subscribe to the square round table podcast on youtube also follow us on instagram twitter and facebook our facebook group yeah Definitely and talk guys. to us on instagram and facebook <laughs> yes please, please. please talk please. to us on instagram and facebook <laughs> right all of that good stuff guys so follow us on all social media talk to us on facebook talk to us under our comments we like to have the conversation guys but yes one more time please pick up ix foot guys it is an amazing manga you can get it on amazon right now go ahead and support man support black owned businesses like all of that great stuff support black manga support my boy Zati Watu Banda, please. He is an amazing mangaka, guys. He's putting in a lot of hard work, and we really appreciate it. And guys, yeah, for sure, you are a hundred percent welcome. And this has been the Square Roundtable, guys. We are out. This is peace. peace.